Good day guys and welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're gonna learn how to put videos on top of videos or videos on top of images and then, you know, videos as an overlay. Yes, exactly what you see here on this channel. This has been requested for a very long time and this is usually what I do as well. So the screen recordings that you see here on this channel of the iPad is usually the iPad video being overlaid on an image. Now you can also do this with a normal recording just like this. So we're gonna go through that as well. Now, if this is the first time that you are checking out one of my videos, welcome to the channel. I really appreciate that you clicked on it. Make sure to hit that subscribe button as well so you don't miss any future videos and also put out a community post regarding additional tutorials for like Final Cut, Premiere Pro, After Effects, After Effects I still have to learn myself but make sure to head over to that community post and then just vote for whatever additional software you would like to see tutorials from in with um, along with Lima Fusion tutorial so I'm not gonna skip out on any Lima Fusion tutorials, but you know, it's, it's taking some time be between each update because they want to make it perfect. And I totally understand that, but it's getting quite limited because the tutorials and effects gets quite tricky to make in Lima Fusion, especially the tutorials that I really want to push forward. So those gets a little bit tricky. And before we head over to the iPad, make sure to head over to robotscapevlogs.com and sign up for the newsletter if you want to receive some free presets in the future. Also check out the Creators Bundle version 2 and the Vertical Pack, which is insane. You can also see some of these on my Instagram, which is here if you want to check out the effects. I also made a video down in the description below. Anyway, let's head over to the iPad and create some videos in videos in pictures overlays. Yes. Now moving over to the iPad and over to LumaFusion here, the first thing we're going to start with is to add a background layer, which we're going to add our video to. So in this case, that is going to be a picture of my iPad. And once we have the background layer on the timeline, we're gonna locate the video layer that we want to have on top of it. So in this case, let's use a video record here in this studio. This is an S-Log footage from the Sony a7S III. Now we can also see the video layer is covering the screen completely, so we no longer see the background layer. The next thing we're gonna do first is to trim down the clip so we match the clip to the background layer. Usually this is the other way around, so you edit your footage first and the talking head part, and then you can later apply a background layer or you can just stretch the background layer out after you have edited the talking head part or any other video that you want to use as an overlay. So the background layer is just gonna be a static image or it could be a video as well, which it's basically gonna stay there in the background, filling up the empty spot around the video that you put on top of it, which you're gonna shrink and resize to make a little bit smaller. Now the next thing is to move into edit on the talking head part here. And here we can see that it covers the entire preview screen. So if we just go over to size here and resize this or just use our fingers to uh, to resize, uh, we can now see that this doesn't have the same aspect as the iPad itself because the iPad doesn't have the 16 by 9 aspect. So we would need to adjust this a little bit if we want the image here or the video to fill the entire entire screen of the iPad. So we're just going to resize this so it matches the screen of the iPad without interfering with the bezels because we want to have the bezels as a frame around the image just as when you look at the normal iPad screen. Now, once we have this in place, we can still see that we have some of the video going outside of the iPad's screen here on the left and right side. So we're going to move over to cropping and we're going to crop in the left and right side. Now, once we have the left and right side cropped in, in some cases you might have to crop in the bottom and top as well, but for this only the left and right, we're gonna move over to the corner radius because this adds that curve at each corner of the image or the video in this case, so it will look more natural. So if we take a look here, this actually looks like it's natively playing back on the iPad, right? Because we have those curved corners. 
So now that we have these two linked here, the next thing is we can add some basic color correction to the background and we can also add some basic color correction to the video file which we have inside the iPad here. So by doing this now, since we're going to export this later on, allows us to customize and color grade each individual layer. So we now have the option to color grade each individual layer, both the video layer and the background layer. If we do that after we export this, we're going to color correct and apply colors to the entire image, background and video clip included. So you really want to do your color correction right now before we do the export. We want another clip here because we want this to transition into uh, an iPad recording screen. So this is typically what you see here on the screen and what you see right now. You see a photo and then you see the iPad screen uh, placed on top of the photo to bring more quality to it. And uh, by doing this, it's easier to add effects and showcase, which you might have seen in some of my previous videos as well. And also in this videos by adding zooms and so on. So now that we have the iPad screen recording applied on top of the image here, once we go into edit and uh, minimize the size of this, you can see this fits a whole lot better to the iPad because it's the same aspect. This is going to be really easy to place. But again, if you find it hard to place the video, you can go to blending and then you can decrease the opacity to make it easier for you to see. Now tapping on the frame and fit icon will also bump up the screen here so you can see a little bit better. So this is typically what I do. I go back and forth between the button here, simply just tapping on the frame and fit button to make the screen a little bit bigger so I can see as well. But usually I have my iPad connected to a monitor so I have more real estate. So the next thing now is to select the last two clips and we're going to delete them. Even though we're going to use them later, we're going to delete them now so we can export the first part. Now, once the first part is exported, we're going to tap on the undo button, which is here. And this will bring those two clips, which we deleted earlier, back to the timeline. And once we have these two clips back on the timeline, we're going to import the exported clip and place next to the last two. Now we can delete the first two clips because these have already been exported. And since we now have the exported file here, we can start to add some keyframes. So what we're going to create here is a zoom out transition. So this is going to zoom out from this clip and then into the next one. So we're going to go to the point where we want to have our zoom to start. So let's say it could start right here. Uh, going into a frame and fit and then we're going to make a keyframe. On this keyframe, we're going to scale up the size. So we're going to make the image bigger. And once we have adjusted the first keyframe, we're going to go frame by frame and adjusting the size, having smaller size changes to begin with. And as we get to the end of the clip, we're going to have bigger changes to the size. You can also follow along to see the example. Now, as we start to get more zoomed out, we can see that we have some misplacement in the image. Now we can go back and fix this later. So we're just going to keep on zooming out until we get close to 100 on the size. So now that we're getting close to the end of our zoom out, we're going to go back into edit here and we're going to go to the keyframes where we have misplacement in the image. And what we're going to do here is to simply adjust the position of it by dragging it up so it covers the black spot which is on top of the image. Now this will create an updraft in your zoom and uh, at the end we might not use this but at least our animation is complete. So once we have this complete, we're going to do the same thing with the last two clips. And that means we're going to select the first clip and delete that. And then if needed, we're going to trim down the last two parts here and we're going to export those as well with the same settings. Now, once this is exported, we're going to import the newly exported file and place it next to the previous exported file and delete the last two layers, which we just exported. So now we turned four layers into two layers and by linking the last clip as well, we have more room to work with because the iPad screen recording is linked to the iPad. 
Now the next thing we want to do is to continue the animation on the last clip. So we're going to go into edit on the layer which includes the screen record of the iPad and then go to the beginning. Here we're going to make a keyframe and we're going to zoom in the clip. Now once we have the clip zoomed in, we're going to go frame by frame and we're going to do the same procedure as last time, but this time we're going to have a little bit bigger changes to the size to begin with and once we get closer to the end of where we want the animation to stop, we're going to have smaller changes to the size. So now we will have a zoom out transition going from one clip to another. So if we play that back, it will look like this. But we can also see that this part of the animation, which has the change of position on the first clip, is not really looking good. So what we're going to do here is to go to the point here right before we have those uh, changes in position. And we're just going to uh, unlink the audio so we get the audio on a separate track. Then we're just going to cut away the video file. This allows us to now stretch out the audio as we want if the video contains a longer audio file. So now doing a playback, we have a smooth zoom out going from one clip to the other. So now that we created the zoom out, we want to improve the visuals of the zoom out as well. So we need to add some motion blur. So what we're going to do is to go into edit on the first clip and we're going to go to the point where the last keyframe or the first keyframe of the end animation is starting. So that will be around here. Then we're going to move over to color and effects and find a short zoom effect. Here we're going to take the amount down to zero, make a keyframe, then we're going to go to the end and we're going to increase the amount to around two or three. Then we're going to move over to the last clip and we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to go into color and effects and apply the short zoom. Once we apply the short zoom, we can go over to frame and fit and tap on the last keyframe of the zoom effect. Now, once we have the playhead on the last keyframe, we can move back to color and effects and we can make a keyframe with the short zoom effect. Then we're going to move to the beginning and make another keyframe. And on the first keyframe, we're going to adjust the amount of zoom we want. Now, going back to the last keyframe and then a few frames towards the beginning again, we can see that the zoom lasts a little bit too long. So we're going to create a new keyframe around here. On this keyframe, we're going to take the amount down to zero and then we're going to delete the last keyframe. Now, there's many ways that you can overlay a video in your video and you've probably seen this on my videos in the past as well. And some of the things that I usually do is uh, let's take this, for example, this is uh, the vertical transition promo for the um, vertical transition pack, which you can find in the description below. This is a high end transition pack for vertical videos and like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and so on. Check it out down in the description below if you want high-end transitions. Now, we have this video on top of the uh, video, right? Because now the layer on the track number one is containing a background layer and the iPad screen recording. So now we have uh, two videos on top of a background, if if that makes sense. Anyway, so what we're gonna do now is the same thing. We're gonna go over to frame and fit and just uh, resize it so it gets a little bit smaller and then we can place it wherever we want on the screen. Now here is a pro tip to make this look better. So once we've done all the customizations to it, we added some cross dissolve, we trimmed it down and we placed it where we want it to be, right? So now we have the uh, uh, video being overlaid on top of a video. Uh, the next thing is that maybe we want to showcase something like we want to have the text to watch this, check this out or subscribe whatever you want to have. So the thing here is that once we trim this down, we can go to the point here right when the cross dissolve is starting. So we're going to have our playhead right when the cross dissolve is starting and then we're going to select the bottom clip. On the bottom clip, we're going to go over to color and effects and add a Gaussian blur. So now we have the playhead at the exact same spot, right? So we're going to make a keyframe. And once we made this keyframe, we can go frame by frame until we have the video being fully visible here and then make another keyframe. And on this keyframe, we're going to bump up the radius of the Gaussian blur to the amount that you want to blur out the background. So now that we have the first two keyframes, we're going to go back out to our timeline 
and we're going to do this to the last part as well. So we're going to keep our playhead right at the end of the cross to solve and then go into edit on the clip underneath, which is on track number one. Here we're going to make a keyframe and we're going to do the same thing, but this time we're going to do it backwards and we're going to go to the point right when we see the video being visible again and make a new keyframe. And here we have to go back to the last keyframe and then decrease the radius of the Gaussian blur to zero. Now, like I said, you might want to add a text layer as well to the video which you are overlaying. So let's add a text layer, change the text and change the position of it. So now we have a pretty basic but powerful effect here by using Gaussian blur and a video overlay and some text. So there you have one of the basic ways of creating video overlays or overlaying videos in your videos. This is what I do all the time and this is what you have seen throughout this tutorial as well. The iPad screen recording being added to the picture and this is really really common and uh, it's really easy and make sure that you can you, you know if you can save this as a project. So once you got everything in place and if you do tutorials uh, or any other type of video where you need to have videos in videos or videos in photos, then you can save that as a project. So next time you can just add the uh, overlay that you want to place perfectly and then just copy the keyframes from the previous one over to the new one and then delete the previous one and so on. It saves you a ton of time by doing it this way. So hopefully this video was helpful. Let me know down in the comment section below and uh, also community posts, check out uh, that and vote for whatever editing software you would like to see editing tutorials tutorials in either anyway i will see you guys in the next video